Hello everyone, today we're working on a 2018 Chevy Silverado, it's a 1500 half ton with a 5.3 gas engine in it. We're going to be putting a bypass filter system on it. It's an AMSO BMK23, it's a universal dual bypass mount kit. And a lot of information that I have to present to you on this. Um, also, the oil we're going to be using is the AMSO 0W20. And I have a website, uh, fluidcapacity.com that uh, you can go in and type in the <clears throat> make and year of your vehicle and it gives you all the specifications uh, as far as the oils that AMSO recommends for each cavity and it gives you also as you go down it gives you the filters that AMSO recommends and it also has the uh, fluid capacities for the engine, transmission, cooling system, differential, transfer case, all those items and you can print this sheet out for each of your vehicles so uh, you, you have a, a easy access to all that information because if you try to find it in your owner's manual it gets very frustrating. So that's one thing that I put together for that to make that much much easier. Um, this bypass system, I want to show you what all is included in it. Uh, the BMK23 kit is a universal kit which means that you can put it on pretty much anything. They have kits for uh, say the Duramaxes and, and the Power Strokes and they have a specific kit for each one of those engines. This one's more of a universal one, and I'll show you what comes with it, and then I'll explain what doesn't come with it. The first thing is the hose. We got about 12, 13 foot of the hose. And it comes with the bolts you're going to need, and the hose ends. They're a uh, reusable type hose end, very solid. I've been putting these systems on for close to 20 years, and I have yet to have a hose problem or failure. Um, it comes with a filter head. It also comes with, these are the only mount brackets that they send with it and they all pretty much use the same uh, little mount brackets here. No vehicle specific brackets. So this is what you're going to get with that BMK23 kit. Now I'm an AMSOIL dealer so if you don't already have an AMSOIL preferred customer account this uh, retails for around 312, 314, somewhere in that range. Uh, if, I, if you set up a uh, preferred customer account through me that will save you 20% on the price of this kit. And the other thing that AMSOIL has uh, there's a lot of different uh, vehicle manufacturers out there and each have different size filters on their engines. So they, the adapters, you have to pick and choose your adapter on the AMSOIL site for your specific engine. It goes by filter size. Um, again, this kit does not come with a filter adapter. Now, this is what the AMSOIL filter adapters typically look like. It's a two-piece system. Okay, and this uh, adapter for this truck, you can get one, and uh, I think they retail for around $75, $80 right in that range, somewhere in there. Um, I'm not going to be using this one on this particular vehicle, and the reason for it, um, the, the configuration is not conducive to running my hoses the way I want them to. And there's a drive shaft that's going to be within probably uh, half, three quarters of an inch of this. And where the hoses are running, we're starting to run into things that I don't want to run into. So what I did is I, I started looking online to find uh, an alternative. And there's a couple of them here. I want to show you the difference in them. You can go out and buy a, a very simple cheap one like this. This one's a Transdap. And it'll fit on there, but it's a cast aluminum. I'm not real impressed with it. It's pipe threads on there. Um, it's very shallow. Can you make it work? You probably could. But uh, what I found that I'm going to be using today, it's more expensive. If you're going to do this kit, it's going to, it's going to cost some money to do it. But the protection it offers is, is unparalleled. This is a hamburger's brand. And with this one here, you can see it screws on basically the same, but the, the ports are straight out of the bottom. And they're a size 12 o-ring, SAE o-ring, straight thread with o-ring seal fitting. Okay, and this is going to push you down further and gets me to where I want to move my hoses to. So when I go to put this all up, I'll kind of show you the difference in, in the mounts and uh, also the one from Amsoil and uh, just show you why I went with this one. It just, everything just fits better and works better. This is not cheap. They're going to run you about a hundred bucks for this. It's a billet aluminum. So it was all machined out of one solid chunk of aluminum. It's solid. Uh, I'm very impressed with how it looks. Um, so that's what we're going to be using on that. Now, what I've done, uh, I, I fabricate brackets using existing holes or fasteners. We're fastening onto the frame. You don't really want to be drilling holes in the frames on these trucks. Uh, so I'm using existing holes or fasteners, and what I've done is put together a kit for installing this. And I've got 
basically all these items that we'll need. These here are frame pads and I'll go through and, and this video is basically the instructions to install this kit. So I'm going to be as thorough and complete as I can in showing you everything that you need to know as far as putting it together. Um, but these here are frame pads that will go inside the frame and these are going to hold the, the filter to the frame. There's actually a couple of those. Line support bracket with clamps, any of the bolts you'll need, the nuts, um, any of the uh, JSC swivels, I'll have those included in my kit. So that's something you can get uh, from me. It's a matter of either emailing me or uh, giving me a phone call. I can, uh, uh, most of my transactions I do through PayPal. I send out an invoice through PayPal. So um, that gives you some idea on that. Now the other thing that does not come with this kit is going to be the filters. There's a full flow filter that you would have to buy as well, an EAO 26, and an AMZO EABP 100, and that's the bypass element. So you're going to have to buy those two along with it. So, and then something else to think about too is um, I also include an oil sample valve. That oil sample valve is going to go in uh, on this plug here from the oil coming from the engine. I usually take that plug out right there, and I'll send along the adapter the valve and then there's a cap there to keep dirt and water and everything out of the valve and that'll screw right in there and it makes it real easy for you to take the oil sample to monitor how everything's going with that oil and the other thing you're going to want is uh, oil analysis kits and AMZO handles kits from Polaris Labs uh, it's an independent lab, AMZO doesn't do the testing, it's Polaris Labs and you can buy these kits through AMZO through your, your wholesale account and this is basically the sample bottle, you'll fill it up you know, once you get your engine up to temp, you'll fill it up to the fill line, fill out the paperwork, drop it in the mail, and they'll email you back results usually in three to five days. So that's something I highly recommend for people to, uh, to do the oil analysis. It's the checks and balances to be sure everything's working as it should and performing as it should. Or if there's something going wrong inside the engine that you wouldn't otherwise know about, a lot of times you can pick it up with that oil analysis. So the other thing that I uh, have is the uh, gold plug magnetic plugs. I'm a dealer for gold plugs. Now, this particular plug right here is the one that replaces the engine oil plug on this uh, 5.3. And I've got to uh, show you an example here. <clears throat> I've got a little bolt here. It's a one inch bolt, about nine inches long. Probably a couple of pounds of metal there. And this is the standard plug for that engine. There's no magnet on it at all. The magnet will gives you a way to monitor if there's something going on inside that engine as far as big particles. The oil analysis will show you the small particles that's going on inside. The magnet or a cut and filter part, the full flow filter, will show you the big particles that are going to be in that oil or that are showing you problems there. So this is the replacement in the gold plug for it. And uh, they use a neodymium magnet, which is a very strong magnet. And you can see there we can pick that just about right on up there. There we go. So if there's anything floating around in that oil, that magnet's going to pick it up. And then also for the differentials, same type of thing. This is a plug from these GM differentials from the factory. It's a gray magnet and pathetically weak. They can barely hold themselves with the bolt. I can't even move the bolt with it. Here's the direct replacement we'll be putting in as far as the gold plug. So in those differentials, in those gearboxes, the only filter you have is the magnet. Which magnet do you want on there? The one that pulls more metal out of the oil to protect your bearings? Or one that's fairly weak? It's your choice. So if any of you are interested in those gold plugs, uh, if you're buying the kit, or even if you aren't buying the kit, I can sell you the gold plugs as well. Just let me know. So we're going to start uh, putting everything together here and, and uh, get, the, uh, get the ball rolling. We'll be back with you. Okay, first thing we're going to do, you can see here we've got an in. This is for the oil going back to the engine. This is out going to the filters. So this is our adapter. And uh, in my kit, I'll have a couple of these uh, dash 12 O-ring fittings. And then you go down to a, uh, a dash 10 JIC, which is what the hose is. And first thing you want to do is put a little grease or oil in that O-ring so it doesn't get, uh, doesn't get snagged or cut on the way in. And I like using grease because it doesn't run off. Put oil on there and it tends to like to run off. So just a light coating of grease on there, not a lot. And we're going to put them in.
and these are an inch and a quarter inch size. Um, initially what I'm going to do is just snug them up. When I get underneath and get uh, the adapter all tightened up, then I'll have something to hang on to to go ahead and do my final tightening. And these you want fairly tight on there. The o-ring does the sealing, the threads don't. Okay, and then there's an o-ring on the bottom. We're going to put some grease on that and hold that in when we're ready to put it up. So that kind of takes care of that. Uh, we got a couple adapters that are going to go on there once we get it all up and in place. So the next thing, put this grease away, is we have a plug that we need to take out. I want to show you the filter head. And this shows the direction of flow for the oil. This is dirty, dirty oil coming from the engine. And that feeds in on the outside of both those filters. And it goes through the pleats from the outside up through the center. So the full flow filter will be right here. This here is your bypass filter. And you can see there's a restricted orifice in the head. And that's designed to flow about a gallon a minute on that bypass filter. So the oils both join up together once they go through the filters and then it gets fed back to the engine. And the thing that's very, very important with this is on the clean side especially, keep the hoses and all these fittings clean. Because especially on this return side, once you are headed back to that engine, the next stop is the engine bearings. So if you get any dirt in the hoses, any dirt in uh, the clean side of these ports, first stop's gonna be your engine. It's gonna do its damage. So keep everything clean, very clean. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is take out, on the arrow coming in, we're going to take out this plug, and that's uh, a 5 16 hex, and for some reason Amsoil is having them put uh, permanent Loctite on, so they tend to come out fairly tough, it's really hard, and I usually use an impact with a reducer on to go down to that 5 16 Okay, and then that opens up the port for my uh, oil sample valve. Don't have it sitting here right now, but uh, that's where it's going to go. Okay, and then the next thing we're going to do is I've got my first bracket here, the mount bracket, and we're going to put some bolts in. Put two bolts in, and uh, they got lock nuts. These all come with the Amzo kit. And those are kind of tough to get at, so we're going to tighten those up right away. Go ahead. Okay. And if you need to, if the holes don't line up perfectly, we can always loosen those up just a little bit. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put this on like this, and then there's another bracket. Now that bracket has some notches cut out, little ear notches on the on the top right here. That's going to go up by where the filter mount is at. So it's going to go on just like so. And then we're going to put bolts in. And the bolts have to come from the bottom up through the top. Don't know that we necessarily need any washers on there. You can use them if you want to, but that metal's plenty solid enough to hold everything we need. And then there's two bolts that I'm going to have that are going to be longer with my kit that I'm going to send along. And what that is for, uh, these are the other two bolts that are supposed to fit in right here. But when we put that rock guard on, that rock guard is there to protect the filters and it adds thickness to it so we need the extra length on the bolts or about another quarter of an inch longer so these two gold bolts will go through right on through here and bolt up to hold that uh, rock guard in place okay with this uh, old sample valve we're going to put a little grease on that as well and then that gets screwed in and again that'll tighten up and finish tightening when i get under there once i get everything mounted and solid because it'll be a lot easier and uh, I just want it pointing straight down. And then these threads here, you're going to want to take them out. They're tapered pipe threads. And put some pipe thread sealing on there. Pipe built. And uh, make sure you don't get any inside because it will mess with your sample. Just keep it on the outside of the threads. And uh, then you can tighten that up last to the position you need. First tighten up the silver one. Down tight all the way against the metal. And then tighten this here down 
Uh, don't over torque it. I've had guys that have twisted these off trying to get them too tight. So don't over torque this, but tight enough where it ain't going to leak. Okay. So that kind of gives you the idea on that, where that goes. Um, I loosened up those two upper bolts there a little bit so I can move things around, flex things around a little bit. And I want to show you how this bypass uh, or this uh, rock guard goes on. And first thing I'm going to do is put a couple of bolts in, like so. And wiggle that around. There they go. Okay. And then there's a spacer, once you get it on the truck, there's a spacer that goes between <clears throat> right down here. So there's two holes in the frame. And what's going to happen with those uh, holes in the frame is these here are going to slip inside. And they've got a 3 8 threaded hole right there. I'm going to show you the procedure for tightening these up to hold that in place inside the box frame. Okay, and then the bolt for attaching... goes right through here and then that'll go right into the frame like so and tighten everything up nice and tight and that supports the bottom of that rack guard okay so that kind of gives you some idea and then the other thing that you're going to want to have on hand when you go to put these hoses on <clears throat> take some of this out of the way here again so we can see a little better When you go to put on the hoses, um, I found it very handy to have a crow's foot wrench to be able to tighten these. Because up there under the cab you're not going to have a lot of room and that crow's foot wrench will get you into a tight spot to be able to tighten them. Obviously we're going to do the back one first and the outside one. But that crow's foot, it's a one inch crow's foot wrench will help you tremendously in getting those up and tight where you might not have room to get a wrench for a swing in there. So that's one of the things that you might want to get a hold of. So that kind of gives you the preliminary on getting this all kind of bolted together. There's a couple more bolts that are going to go in this top. <clears throat> right here and right here. And we'll snug those down. Um, but that kind of gives you the idea of how everything goes together. And just kind of look at it all again so you got a good idea how we're doing that all. There you go. So next thing we're going to do is start putting on the adapter for the engine oil. Okay, I wanted to show you the difference here uh, in the AMSOIL adapter from what I'm going to be using. Um, this AMSOIL adapter has the dirty oil coming out the side, clean oil going up the center. And if you look here, we got a drive shaft that's right there. And I can swing it over and get it, you know, right in this general area and probably be fine. But as I try to run my hoses, we're going over to the passenger side with the hoses. And as I, I try to adapt, I'm going to show you the, the angles that I have to deal with and kind of explain why we're not using that particular adapter. A lot of it has to do with the angles that it's throwing me at. Now this one here, by the time we get that hose on there, um, it's, it's throwing me... kind of throwing me back here and then I got to try and figure out how to get back here where my hoses need to go because we're going there's going to be a, a line support bracket right here and we're going to sneak right in through by this uh, rod and up along the outside of the frame we want to stay away from those catalytic converters because they're going to be running you know probably 800 to a thousand degrees we don't want to run, be running those hoses anywhere where it's going to be soaking up all that heat so I'm going on the outside of the frame and uh, in order to get over there this is going to be fighting me you know, there's the side one, and then by the time we get this bottom one on, you know, when you put the hose on there, we're going to be fighting it hard to get those hoses routed to where we want it. You know, with this little hump in the oil pan in the way, it's going to be tough. We're going to be hitting, you know, the hose will be hitting on here. It's just not giving me a nice angle to be able to get where I want to go. So that's kind of what I want to show you. You can get the one from Amsoil if you want, but you know, for the way we're going here, I just can't, I can't get the angles I want. So we'll get the hamburger one. 
and I've got that greased up. I put some grease on that O-ring and uh, pop that up in there. And we go to tighten that. Get as tight as you can by hand. And uh, if you've got a crescent wrench, you might be able to fit it on. I've got a uh, an inch and a half wrench that, uh, that I'm going to put on here and just finish the snugging up. But I believe you could fit a crescent on here. It's an inch and a half flat right here. But I'm going to snug that up. I don't want it overly tight, but I don't want it loose where it's going to leak either. I mean, it's, it's snugging up pretty good right there. You don't want to get crazy tight in that. I've had guys before that have put on these Amzol ones, and they've actually snapped that... Uh, that filter post so you can't get too crazy I mean you don't put a filter on that crazy tight so this needs to be tight but but not so tight that you're going to do damage to either the o-ring or to that filter post so all right so that kind of gives you some idea where we're at there okay I got an inch and a half wrench here put that on there and we'll, we'll finish snugging that up And then we're going to start putting on our uh, our fittings here. We've got a, a dash 10 GIC. It's an 80 degree swivel. And then there's going to be a 45 that goes on there as well. Leave that halfway loose so I can get it aimed where I want it. Put this other one on. Now those are a one inch wrench size. So I'm just going to snug those up a little bit so I can still move them where I need to in case I need to. We'll do the final tightening when we're all done. And again, that one inch crow's foot wrench might come in handy for this as well. Okay. One other thing, make sure these are tight. Now that you got your filter post or your filter adapter on there, this is an inch and a quarter wrench on these main ones. Make sure those are tight. Okay. And then the next thing we'll do is aim these so that we can get the uh, get the hose on. These are the hose ends, and I'm just kind of getting them aimed where I want to go. swing them you know, we can move those where we need to you know so we can get the hoses right where we want them you know that gives us a lot of flexibility there okay so the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and put uh, the hose ends on the hose we'll show you the procedure for that and we're going to start routing the hoses from this end and on up where we want them to go okay we're going to put the hose ends on um, these hose ends the outer outer shell here screws off the main fitting and that gets inserted onto the hose and when you get this new hose, sometimes the ends are tapered a little bit. Um, I use a tool from Snap-on, it's a Blue Point YA-1000A. It makes a nice 90 degree cut on these hoses. You want to make sure you have a nice clean cut to start with. But this cuts it really nice and true and a uh, nice square cut on it. So you need to start with a nice square cut and then uh, this piece is reverse threads. So you put it on the hose you just start turning it on. It'll grab a hold of that hose and you can do it with your fingers or your, your hand and just turn it until, until it hits. If you look inside it's just hit and then I back it off just a little bit. Just enough so that it ain't binding up on those threads at all. Okay. Next thing I do is I take some, uh, some of the engine oil like I'm putting in the engine. Just uh, squirt a little bit of it on the inside of that hose to lubricate the taper as it goes in and I'll put a little bit on the taper as well 
just to make things slide together a little easier. Okay, and when I do this, I usually put the hose ends on both ends of the hose. And then I'll show you the procedure for marking out the hose so we know how long to go. But uh, I'll put both hose ends on and, uh, and then from the filter I'll, I'll string it up and uh, make my final cuts to put the other ends on. But uh, you got a vise handy, it works real well. Just clamp the, uh, the shell that's on the hose there in the vise. Take the crescent wrench. There it is. People have asked me about this hose before. I've been doing these for about 15 years. I have yet to have one of these leak. Um, if you look at this hose, it's got, uh, let me grab the other end here, it's got nylon braids in it. You can kind of see it on the end of the hose. Now, being an engine application, we don't need the high pressure like you would see in a hydraulic system. Uh, in hydraulics, what they'll use is steel braids you know, incorporated into that uh, outer lining of the, of the hose. The inside is a synthetic rubber, the same as what you would find on a hydraulic hose. So as far as the temperature ability of this is basically the same as what you find on a hydraulic hose. Uh, the only difference is we got nylon for reinforcement. So this will handle, um, I don't know what it says on the hose, but uh, these will usually handle in the, in the range of, uh, well, 450 PSI is what it says on the outside of the hose right here. 450 PSI your engine should never put out anywhere close to that kind of pressure. So as far as pressure goes, this will handle it easily. So uh, use it in confidence. Uh, I have yet to have a leak in 15 years on them, and they work very well. So if you put them together right, everything will work beautiful. So we're going to get the other end put on here, and then we'll start putting the filter, filter head up, and uh, we'll be back with you. Okay, I got the ends of the hose taped with duct tape to keep any dirt out. And where we're going to be routing is we're going to be coming from right here, we're going to run right up by this uh, sway bar and right up along the frame. And I cocked the wheel as far as I could on right turn to show you we've got probably a good inch and a half or better clearance between the wheel and where the hoses are going to be. So we've got good clearance there. And what we're going to do is bring the hose up through. And there's also over here by the cab, there's a cab mount. We're going to be running above that cab mount where it runs on the frame. And I'll show you that routing here. Uh, it's kind of tough to route them and shoot it at the same time, but I'll give you some idea where we're going with it all. So the main thing I'm going to work on right now is getting uh, my whole support on right here, line support bracket, and then we're going to get these hooked up over here and get them where we want them. Then we're going to work our way back to where the bypass is at. So we'll start doing that in the back of you. Okay, right here on this, uh, this cross member here right underneath the engine, there's two bolts sticking out that have quite a bit of threads on. We're going to use the, uh, the one that's closest to the wheel, and we're going to put this nut on that supplied the nut and this bracket I supply in my kit and we're going to take that and use the threads on it and snug that baby up there we go okay now those hoses are going to be on the top side of that just like so and The oil going out is this first one I'm hooking up. And I've got a clamp on there ready for it. That clamp's going to go over there right on top of that line support bracket. So we'll hook this up. And like I said, I've got these fittings loose over here on all these, uh, these 90s and 45s so that we can move this around, you know, and get it exactly where I want it when it's all bolted up. So we'll come back later and make sure those are all tight before starting it and running it. Okay, here's the next one.
Okay. Now the sway bar here, any movement you get in that's going to be minimal. It's not going to be moving much at all. So that's not really an issue as far as uh, movement on that. Um, next thing is we're going to put in the, the nuts and bolts to hold these clamps in place. And I'm going to go right there. Put a wrench on that. I don't have that three eighths wrench handy. This clamp will be sitting kind of right on the head of that bolt, and that's fine. It'll kind of it'll it'll bend down right there and and uh, be just fine. Any tweaking we need to do, we can do right here. We can still get at the, uh, the drain plug just fine. And uh, kind of gives you some idea how this is all routed. And like I said, this isn't really going to be moving, you know, maybe a fraction of an inch. It's not going to be moving hardly at all. So even if it's touching, it's not a big deal. Okay, so that kind of takes care of this bottom part and running the hoses here. And uh, we're going to start uh, going back over here. We're going to get the filter mounted. Okay, and we're underneath the passenger side door. Right here's the outside of the frame. We're going to use these two holes right here for mounting. It's a it's a box frame. There are uh, the holes do go all the way through, but this frame the material is so thin. If you try to bolt it to it, the frame just starts flexing, and, and uh, you couldn't hold your bracket where you want it. So what we're going to do, I made these uh, attachment pads here, and uh, they have a specific way they go on. One side has uh, their countersunk pretty deep. I don't know if you can see that countersink there. And that countersink is to allow this bolt to go in far enough uh, to grab and bite into this frame right here and right here. Because these bolts here are basically there just to hold that pad in place until we get the, the main mount on. And, and then uh, once you do that, we're going to put 3 8 bolts in. They'll be sucked up on the inside of that frame. So I'm going to show you how this all goes together. And again, you got to have those bevels pointing outward towards the outside of the frame. And you're going to take and, and put one of these bolts on, probably about three-fourths of the way in. And then take a, the three-eighths bolt. And what we're going to do is bring it in, just like, just like that. Okay. And that's a 5 30 seconds uh, Allen on those uh, bolts. And what you're going to do is start the other bolt. Okay, and then you're gonna you're gonna tighten these two bolts up kind of evenly. Okay. And the main thing you're gonna watch for is you want an even space on each side of this piece so that the the bolt is basically centered in that hole. And uh, you can move it around here, get it where you need it. And then we'll start tightening it up. And there's a little bit of leeway because I made the holes a 7 16 it's a 3 8 bolt, so there's going to be a little bit of, you know, you don't have to be exactly perfect, but it needs to be close. I moved it over a little too far on that one. There we go. About right there is where I want it. Okay, and then we're going to start tightening those down. Take this bowl out of the center because we don't need it there anymore. And as we tighten those bolts down, they're going to flex in a little bit. And that's fine, not a problem. But they're going to take a little bite into that frame. It's going to be almost flush with that frame when you're done.
again, same thing. Get it centered in the hole. Should be about even on both sides. That, that should just slip in basically on both sides. Just barely slip in. You get her about centered. That's close enough. Okay, see that head may flex in a little bit and that's fine. It's not a problem. There they're mounted in. Now next thing is going to be putting on the filter. The actual uh, the, the mounting bracket and the filter head. Okay, I've put in these two longer bolts down here in the bottom. I'm going to snug these top ones up. It's much easier to do out here than under the truck if you can. Next thing is going to be these top bolts. Get them all torqued up. Okay. Now, hopefully, I didn't make these too tight that we can't get them in and out. Looks like they're alright. a little snug but I think we'll be all right okay next thing is putting on the uh, the rock guard okay we got these two longer bolts that I send along with my kit Okay, so there we got the unit, and the next thing is we have this spacer, and the spacer is going to sit right in here. And then we've got a longer bolt, and that bolt will go right through there, and then here's the other mount bolt. Okay, so swing everything up into place. small one first. Okay. And now if you want to, you can you got a little bit of free play here, you can get this level up right where you want it. We got just enough room here for these fittings. We don't want any of the of the uh, hoses or fittings to touch the cab because the cab is isolated on the on the uh, cab bushings so it isolates noise from the frame and the engine and transmission from the cab now there may be some harmonics from the oil pump that if this touches the cab up here you'll hear it it'll hear you'll hear a humming noise so we want to make sure that all these fittings here are not touching any part of the cab any of the hoses or any of the fittings so that's something you got to make sure of like I say, if we uh, got a little bit of free play here, we can move things around, but we have this so it, it sh we should have plenty of clearance there between the, the cab and those hose ends. So we're going to tighten this up, and these bolts are a grade 8 bolt, these 3 8 bolts. We're going to torque them down to about 35 foot-pounds. Um, it's up to you if you want to put some Loctite on them. You sure could. It wouldn't hurt anything. Um, and then we're going to finish torquing up these bolts up here as well. These two here are the last ones we have to do, those two gold ends. So we're going to get this snugged up and then we'll start uh, cutting the hose and getting that to length and uh, finish the routing of the hose. Okay, I put these hose ends on here to show you we're close to that cab uh, support there. But uh, what we're going to do is, is we're going to get it up so that we have, yeah, we have plenty of room there now. So I'm pushing up on that back end of it and that's where we're going to torque it at. We're going to torque to about 35 foot-pounds. So, I still got to tighten up these two bolts here yet, but you can see this is solid to the frame. It's not, it's not going to go anywhere. And we got protection here from the tires, 
So any rocks or anything that you may run over on the road is going to come out. And this is 3 16 plate steel. It'll protect those filters and absorb most all the uh, items that are coming off that wheel. It gives you a level of protection for those filters because the filter material is only probably 40, 50 thousandths thick if that. And uh, this here is a lot more solid. So that kind of gives you some idea how that all bolts up. We're going to finish up tightening up those two bolts. We're going to start routing the hoses. Okay, this one right here is the oil, dirty oil coming from the engine. This one here is the return oil. So I'm going to kind of show you the routing here of where we went. We came over here. I'm going to trace this dirty one. This is the dirty oil. We're coming up and we're coming right up here above that uh, cab mount on the frame. And uh, we've got a hole right here on the bottom of that cab mount. We're going to use that right here. That's going to get used for clamping the hoses to that uh, frame. Okay. And when we go to do that, we're going to have this fairly snug. Because like I say, we got about a good inch and a half there from the tire. I got the wheel turned as hard right as it'll go. And again, this is going to move very little, this, uh, this sway bar. So that shouldn't be an issue at all. And we're going to put on two clamps right up here. And that inside hose right here is that dirty oil. So that's going to go up here to this. Let's see if we can see it. It's going to go right up here to this port. And that port corresponds with your oil sample valve back here. We got that plug out. We got to put that valve in there. Okay. And then the cleaned oil goes up the center, comes out, and back on this other hose. Okay. So I'm going to put these clamps on. We've got one bolt to go through both of them. Just like that, and you have to slide it around a little bit. Get it back there. There we go. Okay. And we'll put that nut on the bottom side. Okay, and then at this point, before we get those clamps too tight, I want to snug up those hoses and get them where I want them. Pull on them a little bit. See, everything looks up here by the wheel. And so they're up there nice and snug and close to the frame. Okay, and then we're going to tighten that up. Okay, now from there, we're going to measure them. And the hose is going to come up to basically about right there to where the end of my fingernail is in that fitting. Okay, so I'm going to run this hose. It's kind of a long one. Run that over top if I can. Okay. Mark it about right where I want it. Let's see about right there. Let's see if I get it straight enough here to cut. Use my whole slicer on it. It's pretty good. And we'll go ahead and do the other one right away. Okay, looks pretty good. All right, next thing we'll do is we're going to get our hose ends. I'm going to show you how to put those on without removing the hoses from the truck again. Okay, we're ready to put these hose ends on. The reverse threads again. And I do these under the truck so I don't have to take them all back off again and try to do it in the vise. It just saves me a lot of time and hassle. So I'm going to turn them on by hand or if, if you can't get them by hand, use a crescent wrench. 
and you turn them on until they bottom out and back it off about a not quite a quarter of a turn about right there and back it off You may want to wipe that down there before you get too far because otherwise you'll think you have a leak down the road because that'll start seeping out by them threads there, that oil that we squirted on. Uh, so one here's an inch and sixteenth. And the other one you'll need is a one inch. Or you can use a couple crescent wrenches, whatever works for you. There we go. Okay. So we'll do the same with the other and then we'll hook them up. Okay. Uh, another note, these two bolts here, when you go to put them in, before you hang this mount, make sure you put the nuts on. It's a lot easier putting them on before you put everything up. Otherwise, you don't have much room back here. Um, we're putting on the oil sample valve. And uh, there's that adapter that I sent with my kit. And we pre lubed that o ring with uh, grease and uh, tighten her up. Tightened up till it bottoms out. Okay. Now, here's the threads on that. Put a little pipe dope on it, and like I said, you put the pipe dope on. Uh, make sure it stays on the outside of the uh, fitting, because we don't want the stuff to get on the inside and mess with the sample. There we go. And basically, we're going to screw that in until we get it to the position that we want. Again, we don't want to get too crazy tight in it. I might need to use a small crescent on it. It's kind of in a tough spot. I don't think my big crescent's going to do it. At any rate, when we get it back down to the bottom again, that'll be the end of it for turning it. There she comes. Alright. Tighten that up. See my crescent over here. pointing down about like that. So you can see how many threads are sticking out. It doesn't have to be terribly tight. I mean, if it seeps a little bit, you can go another turn, but I, if you try to go another turn on this, you may twist it off. So then the cap needs to be tightened up. And uh, next thing over here is the hoses. So get those hooked up. And this here is our dirty one. Make sure where they go. If you're in doubt, go back and track them back again. And I gotta find my curl foot wrench. Go. That curl foot on there gives you a whole lot more swing room and tightening that. And get them good and tight. And also there's a drip of oil up there. Soak it up if you can because otherwise you'll be wondering later if it was a leak. That was from when we put them together. We put them a few drips on the on that insert. Okay, and here's the next one. Okay. 
Okay. That gets our hoses routed there. If you wanted to, you could zip tie those together, wouldn't hurt anything. Um, I'm ready to put the filters on. I usually pre filter the filters before we put them on. And then uh, also, uh, we're going to go up underneath where the uh, engine uh, oil filter adapter is, and we're going to tighten all those fittings up as well. All right, here we are, passenger side. I'm going to show you the install, the completed install. And you can see the bypass filters right here is your running board. And come down underneath and we'll take a look here there's a shot from way back can of see where everything rests and show you the back side there we got our oil sample valve right up here makes it easy nice and easy to take an oil sample get the bypass filter on full flow and got the rock guard there Nice solid, solid mount there. And here's a shot from the wheel end. Kind of give you some idea what we're looking at as far as stuff flying from the wheels. Protects some filters real well. And up here we got our, our hoses. And then we come along, and right here is the cab mount. We've got See if I can get some light on it here. We got those two clamps up there, and that's bolted to the cab mount. Right there's a nut on the bottom side of an existing hole. And uh, up above here, we're not touching the cab at all. Let's see if I can get some light up there, maybe. But we don't want any part of those hoses touching the cab, or you'll you'll feel harmonics or vibration. And we've got that all far enough away from the cab where we're good to go. You can see the ground wire there for the cab or on the inside of that. And as we come around here, I put a zip tie on there on those two just to help tie them together better. We got the steering wheel is turned as hard right as we can go. We got probably a good inch and a half in there of uh, clearance between the tire and, and the hoses. So that shouldn't be an issue. And then we come down by the, by the uh, torsion bar here, sway bar. And uh, we're coming down, tucking on the inside of that. And then we got the clamp right here, bolted up to that cross member. And uh, our line support bracket, I should say. And then we got a couple clamps up on the top side. And as we come on over here to the other fittings, kind of see how everything looks up there. It's nice and neat. I'm going to try and turn around here so I can get a shot of the whole thing from another angle. There you can see the, the hamburger's adapter and just to see how everything fits nicely. Nice neat install. Let's see if I can get over here a little bit better. And take a look at from this angle. And there we go. Okay. Now the other thing is we're gonna be putting the uh, the plastic pan on here and that'll cover this all up nicely. That comes back and ends about right in this general area. Thank you for watching my video. Be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel at youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Don's Oil. I'd like to introduce you to Am's Oil Synthetic Lubricants. We have the most complete line of synthetic lubricants on the market that offer you greatly reduced wear, extended drain intervals, longer equipment life. You can check that out at my website, donsoil.com. I also have a website for looking up fluid capacity. It's fluidcapacity.com. You can go there and print off the capacity of your engine oil, cooling system, transmission, transfer case differentials. Be sure to like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Don Synthetic Lubes. Thank you and have a great day.